Daily Bitcoin pod. Let's get it, shall we? In today's show, I'm going to be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis and quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser. Bitcoin is the new New Testament. Adjust your thinking accordingly. Also, breaking news just in. The Bitcoin difficulty soars to another record. 62.46 trillion. That's a pretty massive difficulty. Also in today's show, the CME becomes the second largest Bitcoin futures exchange as open interest continues surging. Also in today's show, F the regulators says SBF behind closed doors. According to this report, little did I know SBF was such a gangster talking in about the regulators. And speaking of regulators, Gary Gensler's Bitcoin ETF position is inconsistent. According to the chairman himself, Gary Gensler, in a video which surfaced with him back in 2019. Also in today's show, Bitcoin is about to get ready for a parabolic leg up, sending Bitcoin to new all-time highs. According to crypto strategist, I'll be breaking down his latest targets, as well as the former Goldman Sachs executive, Raul Pao, says retail will front run the VCs and institutions before the crypto explosion. He also predicts that exponential age for crypto amid the recent Bitcoin bull market. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. And welcome y'all just joining us. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. All subscribers get an on-screen shout out and make sure to smash that like. And only subscribers as of now could participate in the live chat. So another incentive to smash that like button, fam. Now, welcome everyone. This is podcast episode number 1446. I'm your host, JV, and today is October 30th, 2023, the day before the birthday of Bitcoin, which is on Halloween. Now, welcome y'all. Massive shout out to everyone in that live chat. I appreciate all the interaction. Shout out to Helen. Appreciate you. Fairground Fun Fairs tuning in from Cornwall, England. Massive shout out to everyone in the UK. Chris Minka in the building. Matthew, what it do? James Elsie, thanks for the healing vibes. I know you recently broke your back. I know you're in the hospital right now. So everyone's saying some more prayers and healing vibes uh, to James. Also, Legends Valley music. Appreciate you tuning in. Crypto Lucian, what it do. Good to see you guys. I mean, a lot of interesting things happening right now in the market. A lot of news to share with you. Will Stop Sun versus Guru. That's right. Bitcoin's birthday is officially tomorrow. This is exciting times. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is it 14 years old or is it going to be 15 years old? I think Bitcoin was uh, released the Genesis block in 2008. And if it's going to be obviously in 2023, you do the math. I think it's 15 15 years. Correct me if I'm wrong. Shout out to Jason Burt March. I appreciate you. That's what's up. The $100,000 party is coming soon in Puerto Rico. Once the Bitcoin price action surpasses that 100K mark, we're going to all be celebrating together. Cannot wait. Shout out to our moderators, Digital Dankness, Bitcoin Maximus, Streamlabs. I appreciate all the help and the moderation. Now let's kick things into high gear and kick off today's show with our market watch as we do each and every day. Checking out here, we can see on Coin360, Bitcoin is consolidating, currently trading above 34,400, down just 1% for the day. But the Bitcoin dominance, as you can see, is above 52%. We have Ether barely holding on to $1,800, while Solana, XRP, and Cardano are breaking out and in the green. But this is just the one day. Sometimes we've got to zoom out for some perspective. In the past seven days, Bitcoin is up a whopping almost 15%. Solana up almost 20%. Ether up 8%, XRP up 11%, and BNB up almost 5%. Again, when in doubt, zoom out. Let's look for the past month. Bitcoin is up almost 28% in the past 30 days. Not too shabby for the king crypto. Ether up 8%, Solana up a whopping 71%, and Cardano up over 20%. Can you say bull? And checking out coinmarketcap.com, the current crypto market cap stands tall at 1.27 trillion, with roughly 38 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. We've got the Bitcoin dominance at 52.8% and the Ether dominance on the decline at 17% even currently. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours, we have Thorchain up 14%. We have our Weave up 10% and Cosmos up 7.5%. And checking out the top gainers for the past 
last week. Pepe is up 51%, Conflux up 42%, and Gala up 41%. Pretty massive gains overall for the altcoin market. And checking out Crypto Bubbles, it shows us the top gainers for the past week. We have PLS up almost 18%, along with Hex up almost 11%, Rune up 15%, and RLB up 12%. And checking out for the weekly, you can see massive gains again. Checking out for the monthly, even more massive gains. And let's check out the yearly. Holy moly, Cause is up 2,600%. What about the market cap plus the weekly? You can see the king is the biggest bubble, up over 10%. Let's freaking go. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. We're currently rated a 68 in greed. Yesterday, a 72. Last week, a 53. And last month, a 47, which is neutral. So there you have it, fam. How many of you are bullish on the king crypto? And how many of you have been taking advantage of that dip? Let me know in the comments right down below. And another quick shout out to everyone in that live chat. I appreciate you guys. Shout out to Passive Income AI. What it do? Good to see you, McLovin, and the rest of the crew. Let's freaking go. Don't forget, this is a live and interactive show, so I highly encourage everyone to subscribe and take advantage of the live chat, such as S Master. Congratulations. I appreciate the subscription to the channel. Also, uh, Nugent, Tommy P, and the rest of the new subscribers. Much love and much respect. Now let's dive into today's Bitcoin technical analysis. Check out the charts where the Bitcoin price action is likely to go next, shall we? Here we go. The bullish momentum that propelled Bitcoin's price to a year-to-date high continues into its third week as the price action presses towards that $35,000 handle. The current high for the year is 35.2, just FYI. Now, some notable developments that back the current bullish momentum are as follows. Number one, the forming of a golden cross between the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average on the daily time frame. And number two, liquidity maps from Decent Trader and King Fisher highlighting the potential potential for a short squeeze between the 36.3 and 40,000 range. That's if the Bitcoin price manages to blitz to that 36. 300 level. And as shared here on Decent Trader, still a good amount of liquidity for Bitcoin between the current price all the way up to 39,500. Send it. How do you think we're likely to finish this month of October? Let me know your thoughts, fam, and I'll read them out loud in a bit. Also, the options market data highlights a shift in the investor sentiment and positioning. So Bitcoin options data appears confluent with the perspective that further price upside could be in store, suggesting a potential extensive of last week's gamma event. Uh, culminating with the Bitcoin price rallying to 35, 280, the local yearly high. Now, the data also shows the possibility for a gamma event in the 35 to 40,000 range. Send it, let's go, as investors' positioning has shifted accordingly. And in the past week, daily option volumes across derivative markets have surged, leading the big picture podcast hosts to share the following. Paradigm had its best day ever by 70% in terms of volume. And adding to the conversation, we had Kelly Greer, head of America's sales at Galaxy, who shared the following, the flows we have seen reflect everything that's illustrated here and what's in the market in a listed space. An uptick month over month from quarter three to quarter four, interest in the calls that we have been highlighting. And as we started highlighting this short gamma, the noticeable difference between Bitcoin and ETH in early October actually was the first time we started talking about this. It was incredible to see that play out once we got the catalyst for the spot to break, but it's in range and it seems to be chasing in the spot. And C spot settled down in the mid 30s from when we started talking about it was in the mid-25s. We have seen interest and upside now that the volume is higher and the call screws are a little elevated. Seeing those strikes roll out so that the peak gamma at that time when we would discuss this in early October was roughly 32,000. Now it's around 36 to 40,000. And from the perspective of TA, traders are eyeballing the bull pennant pattern. Now, this formed on the daily time frame, along with the birth of a golden cross, which we all know is bullish catalyst, as outlined here, and the Bitcoin one day daily chart. So, for the short term, the catalyzing move to be on the watch for is whether or not the Bitcoin price move through 36.3 leads to escalating pressure on the shorts. And if this triggers a rapid uptick in spot buying volumes as options and perpetual future traders are forced to cover 
their positions or face liquidation. Essentially, one would see the aggregated short liquidation surge as the spot volume peaks, a process that is documented in the following chart. And according to Alex Thorne, the head of firm-wide research at Galaxy, the Bitcoin gamma squeeze from last week can happen again. That's if Bitcoin moves higher to 35,750 to 36,000, option dealers will need to buy $20 million in spot Bitcoin for every 1% upside move, which could cause the explosiveness in which we begin to move up to those levels. So there you have it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the crypto analysts. And quoting Max Kaiser, the high priest, Bitcoin is the new New Testament. So adjust your thinking accordingly. Preach. And as I pointed out here, the Bitcoin difficulty has soared to a record 62.46 trillion. And as we all know, as the fundamentals and the network gets stronger and stronger, Bitcoin just becomes that much more secure. So it's a beautiful thing. Shout out to everyone just joining us in that live chat. Shout out to Bring Facts. His gold website accepts Bitcoin payments. Enough said. Must be referring to the Bitcoin troll Peter Schiff, the one and only. He actually resides here in Puerto Rico, just FYI. Helen says, I love Max. I mean, who doesn't? Uh, yeah, good stuff. Shout out to Ambrosia Chocolate Factory. Let's freaking go. Send it, man. I appreciate the support. The highest percentage of long-term hodlers ever in history. That is correct, Matthew. So where are my long-term hodlers at? Make some other freaking noise. Shout out to Knox Bill. Says, I'm still feeling 40,000 before November. That's a great target. We still got a full day and a half to make that happen. Let's not forget that Moonvember is right around the corner. Historically, the most bullish time of the year for the King Crypto. So if we're expecting more bullish sentiment, we could obviously not only surpass 40, but maybe trend towards 50,000. But I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments right down below. Now let's break down our next story of the day and discuss this difficulty hitting an all-time high, which is a great indicator for the network. Here we go. After 6.47% increase October 16th, the Bitcoin difficulty has risen again. October 29th, uh, the block height of 814,000 464, the network saw a 2.35% boost in difficulty, moving from 61 trillion to a new high of 62.46 trillion. Soon we're going to be in the quintillion range like the hash rate. This development has made mining Bitcoin block rewards more challenging than at any previous point in Bitcoin history. But despite this increased complexity, the miners remain unfazed. That's right. Sustaining a total hash rate of just above 450 a quintillion exahashes per second, which is outrageous. Currently, the block times remain below the 10 minute average with data indicating speeds ranging from 9 minutes and 17 seconds to slightly above the nine minute mark per block. A total of 42 mining pools are contributing to a minimum of three giga hashes per second to the Bitcoin blockchain. Furthermore, nearly 17 pools boast upwards of one exahash per second of hash power dedicated to the Bitcoin mining. And in October 30th, today, around 26 mining pools are operating with approximately one petahash per second of hash power. A mere 48 hours ago, Ant Pool held the reins as the predominant mining pool. However, recent statistics reveal the fa that Foundry had taken the lead, boasting 27% of the total hash. And Antpool is following closely behind with 26.58%. Now together, these two pools govern a staggering 53.6% of the network's entire hash rate. And over the past week, Foundry and Antpool have locked in a close race in terms of the hash, with Foundry slightly ahead as of October 30th, with 120 exahashes per second, compared to Antpool 118 exahashes per second. So there you have it, fam. I mean, this is a sign of the times. The network couldn't be more strong than it is right now and more secure. And it's only going to continue to hit new all-time highs throughout this bull, as we all know. And the Bitcoin tends to follow the hash rate, as Max Kaiser has been calling. In fact, as I quoted him the other day on X, Max says the current hash rate indicates that the Bitcoin price right now should be in the mid $300,000 range. So he's ultimately saying with this hash rate, currently we should be at a $350,000 Bitcoin price action. He's also calling two hundred and twenty. 20,000 as the short term target currently in play. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser. And shout out to y'all just joining in the show. Melda, what it do? Always a pleasure. Welcome, fam. And uh, good stuff. Philip, I appreciate you tuning in. He says, first time. Uh, 
tuning in. Been here for a few weeks now. Love your daily updates. Well, I appreciate it. Philip Raymond, much love, much respect. Massive shout out to Zero Dollar G Row and the rest of the crypto news alerts fam. Much love, much respect. Now let's dive into our next story of the day and discuss the CME futures, which is uh, making big moves here, uh, becoming the second largest Bitcoin futures exchange as open interest continues surging. That's right. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange better known as the CME, which is a regulated derivatives exchange that lists Bitcoin futures, now stands just behind Binance in terms of notional open interest to rank second in the list of BTC future exchanges. How many of you have used CME futures before? Do let me know. And how many of you have used Binance futures? Let me know in that chat. Now, the CME open interest recently hit $3.58 billion yesterday, October 30th, pushing the regulated derivatives exchange platform to jump two positions from the previous week. The CME overtook Bybit and OKX with $2.6 billion and $1.78 billion worth of open interest, respectively, and is just a few million away from overtaking Binance's $3.9 billion. Pretty awesome. The standard Bitcoin futures contract offered by the CME is valued at 5 BTC, just FYI, while the micro contract is worth a tenth of a Bitcoin, which I guess would be 0.1 Bitcoin, right? Now, perpetual futures instead of the ordinary futures contracts are the main focus of open interest in offshore exchanges as they come without an expiration date and use the funding rate method to maintain their price parity along with the market price. Now, the Bitcoin open interest refers to the total number of outstanding Bitcoin futures or options contracts available in the market. It measures the amount of money invested into Bitcoin derivatives at any given time. The open interest measures the capital flowing in and out of the market. If more capital flows to the Bitcoin futures, the open interest will increase. However, if capital flows out, then the open interest declines. Hence, the increase in open interest reflects the bullish sentiment, whereas a decline in open interest indicates bearish sentiment. Now, the CME's rising open interest not only helped regulated futures exchange to climb to the second spot amongst futures crypto exchanges, but also saw its cash-settled future contracts exceed 100,000 BTC in volume. Just imagine what's going to be done when we get the spot Bitcoin ETF. Say goodbye to derivatives. We're going to have that true price discovery for the first time in ETF history, fam. You don't realize how big of a deal this is. We'll talk about it a little later. The rising interest of traders in the Bitcoin futures market has also propelled the CME to attain 25% of the Bitcoin futures market share. A majority chunk of investments into the CME futures has come via standard future contracts, indicating an influx of institutional interest as Bitcoin registered the massive double-digit surge in October, helping it reach the new one-year high of above 32 thousand dollars. So there you have it, fam. By a show of hands, I am just curious how many of you have dabbled in futures? How many of you are trading Bitcoin futures? Just for the newbies out there, I would suggest staying away from it as the majority of these future traders are absolutely getting wrecked against the market. Makers trading with leverage is extremely risky, and I cannot stress that enough, especially when there is extreme volatility in the market. And every bullish cycle expect extreme volatility. That's why so many leveraged positions, whether shorts or longs, are all getting wrecked. So be very careful, fam, especially when trading with leverage. Ambrosia says 10-4. Glad. Capiche. Abel Gonzalez. Send it to 300,000 and let's freaking go, right? Stop playing with the games. Matthew says, reminder, when you sell this cycle, BlackRock, Fidelity, and Van Eck, ARK, and 21 shares, all these big companies are going to buy it and you'll never see it again. Preach. Lazy Turtle. JV, I want one of those hats. Well, I'll be sharing where you can get one a little later. Stay tuned. Forget futures. It's all in the spot. I'm with you there to show 100%. We don't care about futures. Futures equals derivatives and manipulation. Good for Gary Gensler and his cronies on Wall Street. Good for the central banking cartels and the money printers. Not good for any investor. So they cannot say, oh, we're looking out for the best interest of the investors. No thank you. No clarity, Gary. Why don't you listen to Congress and approve the Bitcoin ETF spot in the United States? Otherwise, you're going to get your ass fired. Just saying. Joseph, what it do? Much love, much respect. Appreciate you tuning in to the live. Made a small bag off of futures to zero to dump it right back into BTC. It's how I just got 
my Bitcoin. Word up. You got to do what you got to do. DCA Bitcoin, no alts. Nada. Futures will likely take the funds. Yeah, exactly. I predict our spot Bitcoin in cold storage will uh, trade at a premium over the spot ETF. Paper Bitcoin, like spot gold, trades at a premium to gold and spot ETFs, says Matthew. Great, great point. Only HODL, 100%. Barry BTC, welcome fam. Will Stop Sudden says, I only buy BTC. That's because you're a smart man. Much love and much respect. Now let's discuss the latest with Sam Bankman Freed, who has been testifying in court. Hopefully, we get some resolution soon with how this all plays out. But very interesting, he has said some very alarming things behind closed doors, which makes me believe maybe this fraudster was also a gangster, right? He said, F the regulators. It's almost hard to believe, but nonetheless, let's break this baby down, shall we? This is the man, the myth, the legend right here, the scamster, the mini Madoff, as we like to call him here on the channel. So here we go. Despite publicly supporting drafting crypto regulation to protect customers, disgraced crypto exchange FTX founder, SBF, uh, appears to have shared a deep disdain for regulators, things that make you go, hmm. During SBF's ongoing criminal trial, their assistant prosecutor, Danielle Sassoon, inquired if the crypto executive could recall his previous Twitter statements regarding his support of blockchain regulation to protect customers. Here's what he responded. I don't remember, SBF said. And she asked, but in private, you said F the regulators, right? And here's what Bankman Fried responded with. I said that once. Among other profanities, whoa. <laughs> the former crypto executive also stated he viewed a subset of people on crypto Twitter as dumb mofos. Wow. Before his arrest, SBF testified in 2021, hearing before the U.S. House Financial Services Committee on crypto regulation. Therefore, he thinks he is better than everyone else. He's calling everyone else on Twitter dumb mofos. Why? Because we don't commit crimes like you do, you dirty piece of ish. Just saying. Anyways, you said it. Regulators was PR. Asked as soon. SBF responded. I said something like that. And during the additional questioning, SBF also claimed that the benefits of helping draft crypto regulation, including a Assisting in FTX, taking market share from competitor exchange, Binance. And before FTX collapsed last November, SBF revealed that the exchange, along with sister hedge fund Alameda Research, held close to $15 billion in customer deposits, with $10 billion reported missing. Where'd that $10 billion go, SBF? Good question. November 8th of 2022, the Binance founder CZ signed the letter of intent to acquire FTX. The deal clearly fell apart the day later after Binance reportedly viewed the FTX books, discovering the asset discrepancy. SBF recalled that November 7th last year, customer net withdrawals amounted to $4 billion, or 100 times the volume of an average trading day, sending the company into a deep liquidity crisis. There was a run-up. Everyone was withdrawing their funds. And then the next day, would they file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which is crazy, you know what I mean, to say the least. Now, the criminal trial of XBF is ongoing, expected to wrap up. By early this week, how do you think this will likely play out for Sam Bankman-Fried, Caroline Ellison, Gary Wang, and the rest of the executives over at, you know what I mean, uh, uh, FTX? Personally, I, I'm kind of like convinced that SBF is going to get away with this some way, somehow, but I'd love to know your thoughts. For example, right now, Biden is president. What if he gets, hypothetically speaking, five years and 10 years of probation? or maybe zero years in prison and 20 years of probation. And then Mr. Uh, you know, Biden comes along and pardons him and he gets off the hook clean and has no consequences. Nothing would surprise me because he was donating so much money. He was the second largest campaign donor to the Democratic Party and they take care of their own kind. I'm just saying. Shout out to Zero Dollar G Row. I appreciate the super chat contribution. You're too kind. Can't really chat while at work, but still listening always. Thanks for the primo content. Much love, zero dollar G row. I appreciate that. Uh, Knoxville says SBF should have to work a real job. Job. That's right. Get him a job at McDonald's. I think that would be fantastic. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe humble him just a little bit. Helen, what's up? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Shout out to Tim. I appreciate you tuning in. I want a list of the politicians he bought, right? 
Wouldn't we all? There's a lot of shenanigans going on behind closed doors. Also, we already know that Bankman Fried was working behind closed doors with the chairman of the SEC. Gary Gensler even admitted in Congress that they have met up several times. So what were they discussing? And how can the sheriff of crypto, Mr. No Clarity Gary himself, turn the other cheek and allow him to get away with all this fraud? Anyone looking at anything, no accounting, no accountants, they just could do anything they want. You know what I mean? And literally just turn the cheek because I think Gary and him both were enemies of Bitcoin, right? And when your enemy is a Bitcoin, you work together. So I think Kaludin is going on behind closed door. That's why I almost feel like he may get pardoned. So, but let me know what you guys think. OJ walked. Why not SBF? Good point, Lazy Turtle. Anything is possible. RIP off, <laughs> right? Love the show. Far shot. I appreciate it. Much love, much love. And his parents, I don't think his parents should get away with it either. I think they're complicit as well. I think they're all complicit, if you're to ask me. You know what I mean? They should have him work a 10 to 12 years and then take his money away. That's right. He took the money away from the investors. Maybe he should work for free at a nine to five serving fast food. We can all visit him. You know what I mean? Keep driving around the drive through, pull a Mr. Their beast and go 10,000 times through the drive through Why not? Straight to jail, says Helen. Well, we'll see how it plays out. I'll be keeping you guys posted, of course, with the latest updates as they are delivered. Next, let's discuss Mr. Gary Gensler, the sheriff of crypto, the chairman of the SEC. Did you know in 2019, a video just surfaced of him talking about why the SEC has not approved a spot Bitcoin ETF? It's not consistent considering they're approving futures ETFs. You can't make the this stuff up. So let's break this baby down. And if you think Gary Gensler should get fired, I want to see hashtag fire Gensler. Put that in the live chat. We'll see how many of you agree. So yeah, here we go. Gary Gensler once criticized the United States SEC for its inconsistent approach to spot Bitcoin products, according to the resurfaced video of Gensler from 2019. This video clip, which you can see here on your screen, which has recently made the rounds again on social media, shows the pre-SEC Gensler discussing blockchain regulation at the 2019 MIT Bitcoin Expo in a fireside chat with the U.S. SEC Commissioner, Crypto Mom, Hester Pierce. Shout out to Crypto Mom. And I appreciate the Super Chat contribution this time. I'm coming from Farshad. You're way too kind. Much respect to the fam. I greatly appreciate the Super Chat contribution. So much love and uh, much respect. So yeah, quoting them here, uh, Gary, Bitcoin futures and I think Ethereum futures and so forth will exist and Bitcoin ETFs have not. And that feels a little inconsistent to me. It feels a little inconsistent, Gensler said. Even though the laws aren't exactly the same, they're quite similar, Gary Gensler added. Hmm. Now, meanwhile, on X, the crypto community couldn't help but highlight the contrast with Gensler's views towards the spot Bitcoin ETF. Now, I'm going to actually play this video and react to it live on the uncensored crypto news alerts after party on Rumble. So stay tuned, fam. Anyways, here's what uh, she, they, they are saying on X. Gary Gensler says Gary Gensler is wrong. <laughs> Market analyze, Zach Bowell posted, we missed out on chill and normal Gensler. That's right. Gensler was actually a good guy at one point before he got recruited into the SEC. So, you know, he was working with, you know, the powers that be as a head over at Goldman Sachs as well. And I believe Gary is already worth north of $100 million dollars. And I almost feel like he has to pay back his cronies. Hence, he's working as a chairman of the SEC. Clearly doesn't need the money, right? Now, to date, the SEC had only approved Bitcoin and Ether future ETFs. And since as far back as 2017, the SEC rejected spot Bitcoin ETF apps, a tradition carried under Gary Gensler, I wonder why, who has denied, delayed, or pushed back recent spot Bitcoin ETF apps and claiming the funds don't have protections for market manipulation, which we all know is nothing more than FUD. Gensler's SEC was sued by asset manager Grayscale for rejecting its bid to convert its existing Bitcoin trust into a spot Bitcoin ETF. A court ruled the SEC was arbitrary to reject the application and the SEC did not appeal that decision. Why is that? Because they can't. They have no firm 
ground or foundation to stand on, they know they're in the wrong. So kudos to GBTC, Barry Silbert, and their parent company, Genesis, for actually going after the SEC and actually getting, you know what I mean, a V and giving Gary and the SEC a big fat L. Massive shout out to Mick Lovin. Appreciate the Super Chat contribution. Much love and much respect. To all the people uh, just tuning in, new rules on the channel. In order to participate in the live chat, you got to be subscribed to the channel so you know what to do. It's worth it. You're going to get a live shout out on screen and you can join the crypto fun in our community and you can be featured, of course, with whatever you said. Now, with that being shared, shout out to Chris. Appreciate you tuning in, fam. Shout out to Ah Trini. What it do? Long time. Good to see you again. Tom the Hat. Welcome, welcome, fam. Never going to happen, unfortunately, says Helen, referring to Gary Gensler getting fired, fam. Let me know. Great to hear. Doing good. Just waiting for the blast off, says Bitcoin Trini. Happy to hear that. Sack Gensler says Fairground. I'm with you on that. Will M. Welcome, welcome. Appreciate you tuning into the live. Shout out to Renard, uh, Leonard Ray. Money man. Blockchain. We need more crypto rappers. That's what's up. 100% with you on that. Shout out to the heavyweights. Again, appreciate the super chats. Robert Brady says Gary must be in the pocket of a large institution to be on the back. And yeah, probably uh, in the pockets of many large institutions. I would say the same. Doesn't Gary Gensler just look like uh, Burns? Mr. Burns from The Simpsons agreed with you on that one. That's hilarious. He even got like the spots on the head. You know what I mean? Gary looks just the same. Gary the worm, kind of like Jamie the tapeworm. You know what I mean? Shout out to Matthew. Next ETF deadline, November 11th and January 10th. That's right, Robert O'Connor. I know the ARC uh, 21 shares deadline is January 10th. And that one in particular. Just sub said Jag. Congratulations. Appreciate you subscribing to the show. Much love and much respect to all the new subs. Yeah, he is nothing but a liar, says Helen. Preach. All right, fam. Now let's break down our next story of the day. Now that we discuss uh, Gary Gensler, now we need to discuss actually um, a very big prediction, right? And uh, this is actually a bonus story before we get into the latest from Ra'u Pal. So let's first uh, break this one down. I forgot I had this bonus story for you today, right? Yeah, here we go. Bitcoin is about ready for a parabolic leg up, according to crypto strategists. And here are his targets. Let's break this down. A trader who continues to build a following with his timely Bitcoin calls as of late, thanks to Crypto King, is gearing up for a parabolic surge. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analyst. We're talking about credible crypto. He shared Bitcoin appears to have printed the local bottom after touching a diagonal support of a bullish pennant pattern at 33.4. The crypto strategist shared a chart suggesting Bitcoin will rally to about 39,000 first, send it, and end its major third wave surge before consolidating and rallying above 48,000 in the first two weeks of November. So there's the bold call. Do you think Bitcoin will rally to 48,000 in the first two weeks of November? Let me know. Here's what he shared. The current consolidation structure is forming a series of lower highs and higher lows. A triangle structure, which is an impulsive move, is only found in the fourth wave. This adds further credence to our count off the bottom and gives us a clear invalidation point at 33,400 as well. If this is correct, our local bottom is in and we're about to launch into the fifth red sub wave pictured in this chart, which you can see right here on your screen. Credible practices and is referring to the Elliott wave theory, which is an advanced technical analysis approach, which tries to predict the future price action, which follows the crowd psychology that tends to manifest in waves. And according to the theory, a bullish asset goes through five major waves with each wave having its own five sub waves. Now with Bitcoin trading above 34,000 at this time, Credible Crypto's chart suggests that Bitcoin has broken out of its bullish pennant pattern and is in route to around 39,000 for the sub wave final five of wave three. The crypto strategist also notes the Bitcoin has been recently outperforming the tech stocks and says Bitcoin looks poised for a big burst to the upside. Quitting him again, tech stocks look like hot garbage here, while Bitcoin has just broken out of a multi-month consolidation structure and is looking to go parabolic. In before much decoupling, it's all over crypto Twitter, now known as X. So there you have it, fam. Let me know if you agree or disagree with Credible Crypto, and do you think we can hit $48,000? That's another $14,000 surge from here within two weeks as we enter Moonvember, yay or nay? Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. Now let's break down our featured story of the day, shall we? And discuss the Bitcoin price action going parabolic. This bull market, according to the macro guru, 
Raul Pau. Here we go. The former executive says retail will front run VCs and institutions before the crypto explosion. That's what's up. He says retail investors have a chance to get ahead of the venture capitalists and blue chip investors before the big crypto markets skyrocket. In a brand new interview on the overpriced JPEGs pod, the former Goldman Sachs exec says for the first time, the retail traders are scooping up crypto assets before institutional investors place their positions. How many of you got the opportunity to front run all the major institutions as well. Doesn't it feel good? Quitting him here. We have never been given the opportunity to own the infrastructure layer and own it before the institutions. I always talk about this. We are front running the institutions and it's not like it's some mass illusion or delusion. I know because I speak to them all day. They're all coming. All the investors are coming and we get the privilege for the first time in our lives to own this because everything else is venture capital. Now the early stage is VC and to invest in VC, you need to be an accredited investor. Not only that, but most VC funds won't take you unless you have got a certain amount of capital. Facts. So it just knocks everyone out of the actual largest part of the economic high that gets made. It's a club, folks, and you're not in it. So thank God for Bitcoin. And then eventually something goes public and only a few of those companies make a lot of money. So we're disadvantaged as ordinary people. So Raul Powell goes on to describe the risk curve associated with digital assets, saying it is very much like the risk curve of traditional assets during tough market times. He also likens Ethereum to the US economy, a growing ecosystem rife with activity, quitting him here. Right now, as the economy slows down, the Fed starts cutting. People will buy treasury bills, bonds, and then they'll buy corporate bonds. Then they'll buy the junk bonds. Then they'll buy emerging market junk bonds. And then they'll just buy the private credit. That's the risk curve. It's exactly the same in crypto. That's the first part of the crypto spring. People buy Bitcoin. And when they get a bit of confidence and things are working, they go down to Ethereum and Ethereum starts outperforming Bitcoin. Well, previous cycles, I don't know about this cycle. Before you know it, you start going down the risk curve. The good projects, Solana or whatever in the middle, like Polygon Matic or whatever else starts doing well, then you go down to the cowboy land and you go to everything. That's the risk curve. So what's really interesting is once you start to understand that crypto is an economy, it's just a digital nation state. And Ethereum is actually the larger of the nation states. The Bitcoin economy has more money, but actually it's like Switzerland, right? Just like old people storing their money. Well, Ethereum, there's a lot of stuff going on. And so the Ethereum economy acts like the US economy. There you have it coming directly from the macro guru. And to watch this video, he did entitled Raul Powell's quarter four plus 2024 prediction. Check the show notes below the video in the description, but it doesn't end there. He more recently predicted an exponential age for crypto amid the recent bull markets. Let's break this one down as well. According to Raul Pao, we're on the cusp of a significant bull run for digital assets, ushering in what he describes as the exponential age, a time of swift and substantial technological advancements. As he shared here on X, the exponential age theme continues, well, exponentially. The exponential age basket is up over 60% year to date. That's what's up. And this was as of June 21st. He also shares here, my thesis is crypto will outperform tech and tech will outperform all the other equities. Bitcoin is now up 75% year to date. This was published on June 21st. And as he points out here regarding Ethereum, Ethereum is up 53% and is ready to break out soon. He also shared that many individual names that form a large part of my thesis are off to a ludicrously good start for the year, which includes Tesla up 162%. And he goes and can, uh, lists some more like semiconductors at 56%, et cetera, et cetera. And delving into Powell's insights, he contends that tech stocks will overshadow other types of investments, but cryptos, particularly Bitcoin, are poised to take the center stage. That's right, because Bitcoin is the king, for Christ's sake. Now, another notable validation of his thesis is Ethereum's recent performance. Ethereum is inching closer to a significant milestone, nearing the critical price point of roughly $2,000. And according to Powell's observations in the broader tech sector, his analysis pinpoints significant wins, including Tesla that I pointed out boasting 160% increase for the year, while Vanex Semiconductor Exchange Traded Fund, SMH, has risen nearly 60% on the year. These figures align with Powell's theory that the tech stocks will outperform other equities. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Now, furthermore, he postulates that the new bull market cycle commenced back in October, although this cycle may witness periodic corrections. He 
foresees the crypto market reaching new annual highs. That's what's up. As he shares here, this is all the confluence between the everything code and the exponential age and is my core focus for this cycle, which I think we started in October when liquidity bottom. Now, Powell also believes that as technology stocks correct, cryptos will record new annual highs. Let me know if you agree or disagree that we are in that exponential age. And what are your thoughts on Raul Powell's predictions? I also watched some of his more recent interviews, and he is predicting the Bitcoin market and the market cap in general to 10 to 20 X. And you do the math. Just a 10X on Bitcoin by itself would symbolize a $340,000 Bitcoin price. If we were to 20X, holy moly, we're talking about $680,000 per BTC. I also got to point out, though, I also heard him say that he is not a big holder in Bitcoin anymore. Ironic enough, he is all in on Solana, which blows my mind. Now, lo and behold, Solana is one of the top gainers for the past month, but I always looked since the collapse of FTX and all the venture capitalists that were using Solana and pumping it up along with, you know, the criminals over on Wall Street makes you wonder. I just lost a lot of respect and credibility for Solana. So when I heard Raul Powell say 80% of his portfolio is in Solana, I'm like, this guy has gone crazy. Why is he ish coining like that? Literally, he used to be very pro-Bitcoin. Then he took the stance of kind of like anti-Bitcoin and anti-Maxi, which is a little alarming and shocking to me. But I'd love to know your thoughts on Raul Powell. Do you feel his prediction could be accurate? How do you think, uh, you know, what is he thinking to hold 80% Solana not to be holding Bitcoin. And it doesn't mean he doesn't hold any Bitcoin. He could be holding tens of millions of dollars worth of Solana. But to say 80% of his portfolio is in an ish coin is a little alarming, to say the least. Shout out to Digital Pancake. I appreciate that subscription. Much love and much respect. Now let's dive into our live Q&A. Massive shout out to everyone in that live chat. Let's freaking go, shall we? Yep. Let's freaking go. <laughs> Bring facts. I am good. Uh, 1,500 hit the telephone pole. Howdy. Holy cows. Welcome, fam. Raul Powell was never right. <laughs> Appreciate your insights. Raul Powell was a trader. He had fiat brain. He doesn't understand that fiat will be obsolete in 20 to 30 years. Maybe fiat currency will be obsolete a lot sooner than that. What do you guys think? Yeah, the bulls united 100%. Shout out to Dutch Hodler. I appreciate you tuning in. Much love, much respect. Heard the tire screech. Well, stay safe. Please uh, bring facts. You know what I mean? Emilio Gonzalez says, love you. Forget him. You are the best content news and just total badass JV. I am so happy to be included in the fam to the moon to Puerto Rico. Shout out to Emilio. I appreciate the love. Appreciate the insights. Appreciate the feedback. Appreciate the support. Let's freaking go. Uh, McLovin says, I am uh, in the very near future. Today's prices will seem unbelievably cheap. There is really never a bad time to buy Bitcoin. I agree with you on that one. I am probably going to keep doing it for a while. Dollar cost averaging. 100% music to my ears, McLovin. You know, every single Bitcoin hodler that has been hodling for four years or longer is in the mother freaking green. So all I got to do is hodl, dollar cost average, and above all, have the patience not to touch your crypto. You know what I mean? Uh, shout out to when. Appreciate you tuning in. Peter Wald, welcome. Andy Surfer, what it do? He says, Paul has been a swinger for too long. Well, I, obviously, right? What's up, Ellen? Good to see you. You're very welcome. Emilio, De Nada fam, much love. I'll keep buying up to 60,000 or 50,000, says Chris. That's what's up for the cycle. And the next cycle, I'll buy up to 90 to 110,000 per Bitcoin. Send it. Let's freaking go. What up, Joseph? I am uh, mitigating my IRA Roth to crypto. I trust capital from better smart, normal market, so ish that I lost almost 500 after maxing it this year. I know it's risky, but I am tired of fiat. I don't blame you. Fiat is the melting ice cube I would steer far away from. What up, Ron Warren? Appreciate you. Helen says he is crazy. Word up. Uh, welcome, Ron. He says Raul Powell's take on Solana is spot on with the upcoming Fire Dancer upgrade. Is that the name of it? Fire Dancer. Interesting. Uh, Solana will have redundancy, speed, and 
and scalability. They also recently partnered with Visa. Very interesting. I appreciate those insights, Ron. Thank you for uh, participating in the live chat as well. Much love, much respect. Uh, trust the process says, uh, ah, 100%. Uh, Zero Dollar G Row says, I got some Solana. It was really impressive scalability, low transaction costs, and blazing fast transaction speeds. Good use case argument, but Bitcoin is the king. All hail the king. <laughs> Word up. Bitcoin is king. Word up, Matthew, 100%. Man, I'm afraid to open my IRA with I trust capital and crypto IRA firm, to be honest. Word up. If you're going to put your crypto into anything, make sure they are stable. I will say I trust capital is the largest IRA crypto platform in the world. So if they're not trustworthy, more than likely none of the others are as well. They used to be a sponsor of the show, just FYI, previous cycle. I still have my gear, <laughs> which they sent me in the mail. So thank you for the gift, I trust. I'm still rocking the cup each and every day. You know what I mean? Yeah, game dudes. I am in Solana and in profit. May those take profits. Satwise Jenks, how many times has Solana crashed already? Good point. Their network has gone down on like Bitcoin. <laughs> Andy says, $21. I'm long on Solana. I think it's six or nine times as Bitcoin Trini. Good to note. Everything will happen in 2024 for Bitcoin, says Joseph. That's right. 2024 is going to be a massive year. You have so many bullish catalysts and Bitcoin is in unprecedented times. You got Bitcoin having 2024 six months out, going to happen in April. We also have the spot Bitcoin ETF likely to be approved and trillions of dollars sitting on the sidelines awaiting to enter the Bitcoin market. We also have the supply shock as game theory continues in full effect. There's currently only 1.6 million Bitcoin on the exchanges. And when you have massive asset managers with massive buying demand, they're all going to want to be accumulating sats because they're all going to need more Bitcoin than actually exists. Long-term hodlers aren't selling. It's going to drive the price up. These are just some of the bullish uh, uh, you know, dynamics occurring right now in the market and which are going to be occurring in 2024. So exciting times. Digital pancake. What it do? Puerto Rico or El Salvador? Asked Alos. That's a great question. I can't speak on behalf of El Salvador because I've never been there, right? So it'd be all speculation. However, I think it is obviously a top prospect to live. I've lived in Costa Rica. I've lived in Central America. I've been to Nicaragua, but I've never, I've been to Panama, but I've never been to El Salvador because back then it was too dangerous to travel. Everyone back when I lived in Costa Rica is never go to El Salvador. It's the most dangerous place in the Central Americas. Never go there. So I never went there. But since Bukele made Bitcoin a legal tender, it's now become one of the safest countries in the world and the safest amongst the Americas. So goes to show you, if you want to take advantage of living in a Bitcoin bullish country where Bitcoin is a legal tender, the clear no brainer is El Salvador. Also, there's tax advantages, no capital gains taxes in Bitcoin City. So for entrepreneurs to open up shop there clearly makes a lot of sense. Hence why so much innovation is opening up shop in El Salvador. Puerto Rico is the crypto mecca of the United States. Also, zero capital gains tax for investors. If you apply for Act 60 and you live on the island for 183 days out of the year. So there's a lot of incentives to be here as well. However, the major difference, clearly, Bitcoin is not a legal tender in Puerto Rico. It's still ran by fiat corruption. Unfortunately, that's the downside. Great 12-hour midnight breakdown was a lot of fun. You're doing it again. That's right. For those who missed it, we did a 12-hour stream here on the channel. It was a midnight Bitcoin pump watch, and it went for 12 hours. I was on it for three hours before I crashed, and while I was sleeping, we ran it. I want to do round two but only if we're pumping. I think it would be boring if we're in the red or we're stagnant, trading sideways. So once we're retesting 35,000, I'll probably do round two, but I need your support as well. And I greatly appreciate that. Uh, Robert O'Connor says 35,200. Manana, send it. Let's freaking go. Digital Pancake, I have more talent than every 60 million people, but that doesn't get me anywhere. <laughs> you got to uh, apply that talent, fam. Applied talent, you know what I mean? Dan Damn, imagine people paying you Bitcoin. Hell yeah, I can imagine that. In fact, everyone should be getting paid in Bitcoin. If you have a job, you should be getting paid in Bitcoin. You can make that a possibility using apps like Strike. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, you should be getting paid in Bitcoin. If you're running your own business, you can use Open Node. You can use Strike. Customers can still pay with a credit card. But guess what? You can receive the percentage in Bitcoin which you want. If you want to receive 50% of your income in Bitcoin, you can program it to do so. You want 100% in Bitcoin? 
Bitcoin to continue stacking stats in your business? Program it to do so. 10%, you can program it to do so. You know what I mean? Take advantage of the tools which are already available. Bitcoin is not only for investors. We should be thinking, how can I earn Bitcoin? That's even better than investing in it. You know what I mean? Trading time for Bitcoin. Why not? Trading value for Bitcoin. That's the future. Why are we still thinking and stuck in our ways? I want to work for dollars. That's the slave mentality, fam. You got to get away out of that. You know what I mean? Damn, imagine people paying. That's what's up. El Salvador got good waves and cheap property. That's what's up, Robert O'Connor. Properties are absolutely more affordable in El Salvador. Real estate in Puerto Rico, not so cheap any, lo uh, any longer. When I moved to the island in 2018, uh, 2018, things were half, more than half, or less than half price of what they are now. The same houses that are now selling for maybe $2 million were maybe 500000 to a million a few years ago. But that's hyperinflation. That's because money printer continue to go. You know what I mean? It's just making the poor that much more poor, destroying the middle class, unfortunately. And inflation is taxing the poor. And the average pleb doesn't understand that. You know what I mean? That's why they can't get ahead. Sold all of my RA assets today, says a horse. Ferrero, replaced it 100% with Bitcoin. Massive congratulations. Smart move. Now just have the patience, the hodl, diamond hands. Don't sell. You know what I mean? And check back with me another four years from now and let me know how you're doing and we'll celebrate your victory. JV, how many whole coiners do you think will there be? The most there will ever be. There are 1 million whole coiner addresses, 1.8 million or so on the exchanges. Good to note. Well, clearly, not even half the millionaires in the world will be able to say, I am a whole coiner because there can only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. And realistically, 3 million are lost and gone forever. And that is conservative. Satoshi's wallet holds roughly, or his wallets, 1.1 million Bitcoin. So now we're down to like 17 million Bitcoin. And then, you know what I mean? It's just going to become more and more scarce. And then you have to consider all the institutions buying up the Bitcoin. So, I mean, it's going to be a, a major ultra rarity to be considered a whole coiner. And uh, obviously, there's a lot of whole coiners in the chat, as many of you guys have been following the show for the past five years, et cetera. Some of you had got into Bitcoin as an OG way beyond I ever got involved way before the show. Some of you got involved back in 2011 when it was a dollar, 2013 back when it was 10 bucks, et cetera. But nonetheless, you all had the opportunity to get your Bitcoin before we go parabolic and reach new all-time highs. So hopefully you're seizing the moment, especially with the Bitcoin discounted rate at today's prices of 34,000, making it a no-brainer. Brainer, considering back in November of 2021, Bitcoin was selling at $69,000. You know what I mean? So this time we're going to blow past that all-time high. I can feel it in my loins, fam. Digital pancake, never thought about it, but I'll make sure my agricultural designs will be contracts into Bitcoin or converting it into Bitcoin. That's what's up. Much love. Thanks for your advice. You're welcome. Not invest advice, but just good, solid advice for winning. You know what I mean? Long term. Investors shouldn't be investing unless you're investing for the long term. Gamblers, get involved in futures, trade derivatives, and get wrecked. Don't be that person. You know what I mean? Because you're probably going to be doomed. $34,000 on stream. That's what's up. 34420, happy 420. Is that a coincidence or is that by design? <laughs> Abel, whole coiner victory. Congratulations, fam. Love to hear it. 420 facts. Let's freaking go. Let's go, hodlers. Since 2015. Congratulations, Trini. That's what's up. Massive. Emilio, listen, JV, thanks. You have made me a true believer. This old man one day will owe a great retirement on you and your content. You made a difference in my life. Again, music to my ears. That's what I'm here for. That's why I do what I do each and every day, seven days a week. I think three million whole coiners will be able to do it and many hold more than one. That's right. I'd say a lot of people hold more than one wallet. That's obviously clear as well. So, hmm. It makes you wonder, maybe the average person who is a whole coiner will have two, three, four, five wallets. So that makes it even more scarce, less people being able to become a whole coiner. You also got to consider people like Michael Saylor's company, MicroStrategy, holds 152,000 Bitcoin. That's less Bitcoin on the market. Grayscale has 600,000 plus Bitcoin. That's 600,000 thousand less Bitcoin for the market. The U.S. government holds 
hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin. That's hundreds of thousands of less Bitcoin for the market. That's less whole coiners. That's more super rare, super scarce, right? For the first time in human history, you got Bitcoin, which has a finite limited supply. It's perfect money. It's never existed before. We've never had an ETF, an ETF history with true price discovery the way Bitcoin has it. That's why Gensler and his cronies at the SEC don't want the ETF to be approved. Why? It undermines the dollar. Bitcoin will soar all-time highs just like that. It could literally destroy and decapitate the heads of the central bankers. And let's not forget why Bitcoin was created in the first place to decapitate those heads. You know what I mean? Just saying. And according to James on Invest Answers, there will never be more than 235,000 individual whole coiners. 100%. It'll probably be way less than that if I was to guess. You know what I mean? So don't you want to be a part of history? Or do you want to be a part of the central bank digital currency system and be enslaved for the rest of your life? You have options, but the timeline is running out, fam. You know what I mean? The timeline is running out. Fearless Focus, welcome. Appreciate the subscription. You're now able to participate in that live chat. Much love, much respect. Big up to Michael Saylor. Someone asked me the other day on the live, Justin or JV, what's the second best crypto? You know what I responded? There is no second best. You know what I mean? Shout out to Sailor. Fiat is uh, as useful as my zigzags. Amen. And happy 420 there. Say that number again, please. <laughs> 235,000 individuals who will ever be whole coiners. And I think it'll probably be a lot less than that. What do you guys think? Let me know, fam. Say that number again. Yeah, BTC. 100%. You got that right. Anyways, fam, I've been live now for 54 minutes on YouTube. The uncensored after party. I command you to come join us so we can celebrate together on Rumble. We're going to have a live uh, interactive JV Reacts session. It's going to be lit. I promise you. So come join us over on Rumble. It's rumble.cryptonewsalerts. Dot net, or simply just go to Rumble on your app, on your phone, or on your computer, whatever you prefer. Let's celebrate with uncensored crypto news alerts, live JV reacts, and I appreciate you tuning in to the YouTube live stream. We'll be back tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, 4 p.m. Eastern. I'm looking forward to seeing you there, but in the meantime, let's all head to Rumble, and I'll see you there shortly. YouTube deuces. All right, we out, YouTube. Now we're going to commence